In this video, we're going to cover a generic or simple door. The door will allow us to open it by proximity when we move near it. We can open it by interacting it, such as pushing an interact key on our keyboard. We can open it by a trigger, and then also ways we could possibly improve the blueprint. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Our generic door. Our generic door itself is a blueprint that we can find right here, which has a couple events inside of it that will allow our door to adapt to our needs. If we look at the door itself right here, we'll find we have some options. We have some setup options and then which type of door it is. Now let's go ahead and walk into our door and we'll see an example. We walk close to it and the door opens. If I was to leave, well, nothing happens. But if I come back in and trigger it, well, then the door will close. I could walk through it completely and then come back in and it'll close behind me because I'm triggering it again. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the code is set up and how this works for us. Let's go ahead and pull up our generic door blueprint and we'll go ahead and explore the first versions of it. The first thing will be the overlapping, the opening by proximity. So by proximity, I mean when we have our collision volume here is touched by the appropriate thing, then it's going to trigger an event. If we look at that, we have a on component begin overlap. This is for our proximity box. Our proximity box is a simple box collision. You can notice it's here and you can notice that the proximity box can be adjusted because it is a component. We could make it larger. We could make it smaller. We could make it where the player has to be next to it, where it's got a much larger range, whatever we feel like. This is an option that's adjustable by the designer. We check and see if we've turned on activate by proximity. That's the Boolean we can set up. And this will basically mean, hey, if someone touches it, we're going to go ahead and do something. Next thing we do is we check and see if the person who overlapped us, the actor, their class is equal to a class that we've determined can open the door. That's a setting inside of our blueprint. If we click on it, click on the actual blueprint itself, not the door frame class that could open door. This allows us to restrict it to our third person character. For example, let's say you had a door or switch or a vent or a window, whatever we've used this for that we only want to open if the player fired at it. We well, could change this so the class that can open the door is a projectile or whatever you've determined for your weapon. And then only that will actually have this open. After that, we determine if we can, we should animate the door and we pass in the opposite of the current door state. The door state is a Boolean variable that is simply zero for closed and one for open. Animate the door is a function that we've set up not a function, an event that we've set up so we could easily check and do things that are appropriately. Now some of this code is moved over. We can easily just move it back to clean it up. But again, this is all generic and it's in progress. So the first thing we do is we see if we're currently animating. This is simply a bool that we trigger when we're doing our animation because we don't want the door to continually open or close if we walk in and out of our trigger or we trigger it more than once. After that, we check and see our current condition of opening or closing. If it is opening, for example, the door has been set to open, the door has been set to close, we follow two different branches. We basically have an option on the door called allow close if we want the door to allow close. Let me uncheck this. We'll run through exactly what we've done before. The door will open. However, now the door will never close. Every time I go through, it is checking that Boolean and it says, no, we do not allow close. And well, it doesn't allow close. This is useful if you want a door to open on command and then not have to worry about it closing later. So that's what this is for. If our door state is currently open and we allow closing, then we're going to go ahead and close the door. If not, nothing happens. So let's say after that, we then either set our animating to true, and then we set the door state either true or false, indicating we're now opening it or we're now closing it. After that, we run it through a timeline that simply lerps between zero and one for our speed and changes the door from the starting door rotation to the ending door rotation. 
Now the starting door rotation is captured when we first start by simply grabbing it when the event begin play starts out. Now we do have another option on the event begin play called if we've started open. This is another option here called start open. We'll go and run this and you'll notice, well, the door now starts open. You can also notice when we walk through it, the door won't close because on our options we said allow close no. This would be useful if you want to trigger this door later and tell it to close, maybe to close off a room or something like that. You invite the player in and then you force the door to be closed. Going back down to our process, after we lerp it and basically slowly move it from the start to the close or the closing to the start, we check another branch. Now this branch is basically, do we have a door close time and is our door currently open? Well, what is that? Well, it's another option. Again, it's a generic simple door. We want to make it as usable as possible for the designer. One blueprint handles multiple things. Our ending our door close time is how long it takes before the door closes itself automatically. So if I change it to zero, which is by default, never. If I change it to two and we play, well, let's actually make sure that we can close the door. Let's not start it open. We'll walk over here. We will trigger the door open and then the door will close itself after two seconds. And if you notice, we can't re-trigger the door early because we have our is animating bool and we don't clear it till after we've successfully closed the door or open the door without re-triggering it, we don't have to worry about continually re-triggering our doors. In this case, if we do want to close the door after a certain amount of time, we simply tell the door to close after that amount of time. And that is the basics of how the door works as well as how our overlapping option is done. The other option I have not covered yet are our ending door rotation this is basically where we want our door to finish when it's done. In this case, I want it to go 110 degrees on the Z. If I wanted it to open the other direction, I could do negative 110 for, well, negative 110 for example. We'll go ahead and play this, and when we walk into the door, it'll open towards me. I could even have it more or less. You know, I could have a 60 degrees, and this would basically slightly crack the door open player can't go through it, but it's to give them maybe a little bit of an effect. So you could have it, maybe they walk up, the door opens a little bit, you tell it to uh, auto close itself after a certain amount of time, and then it's kind of give a little sneak peek. So you could do one second, we could do 40 degrees like that. We'll go over here, we'll walk up, it'll open, and then a second later, it'll close on its own. So the door is really customizable. Opening by interacting. So opening by interacting is the option to interact with the blueprint and open it based on interacting with the blueprint. What do I mean by interacting? Well, we have an interact button we've set up on our input. It's our E or our middle mouse button. Let's go ahead and take our existing options here. We're gonna go ahead and keep it like it is. We're maybe we're in a horror genre game and the player can walk up to the door they can interact with it we have a sound that goes off the door creaks open and then slams shut you know after a certain amount of time we'll do something like one sec uh we'll do half a second we'll do a uh, 30 degrees and then we're going to change this to activate by interact so what we're going to do with the activate by interact is now that we go ahead and run this and we walk up to the door well you notice it doesn't open anymore now if I push my E key, the door will open and then close. It'll do exactly what we expect it to do when we walked up to it, except it now triggers based on interacting with it. Now for that being set up, it's pretty simple. Let's find where we hit the code and we have an event called interact with. This event, when it's fired off, simply sees if we can interact with it. If we've told, if our door has been set up to be interacted with, yes or no. If it does, we simply do the same thing we did before. We animate the door with the opposite of the current door state. Now in this one, we are basically leaving the interaction ability up to the player. We are letting the player know that they have full control on if the door should be interacted or not with. So for example, if you require a key, well, that's up to the player to determine whether they're gonna fire the interact event with, not up to the door. 
Now the door itself, again, is set up to interact with, and our player is set to pass that information along. The blueprint does not accept input. Our character accepts the input, and then it does whatever it should with it. So to handle that, what we're doing is we have an interact button event. It goes through all of our interactable objects near us and tells them they've been interacted with using a blueprint interface. And that, of course, basically will say, hey, Mr. Door, fire this event off. The door goes, OK, I'll go ahead and do this if I'm able to be interacted with. So if we push the button, for example, and we're not able to be interacted with, we would get, we can do this, for example, print string. Let's try typing this out properly, print string. Um, I won't open for you. <coughs> we'll go ahead and come back out. We'll tell the door, no, you cannot be interacted with. We'll run play. We'll go over here. We'll hit E. And you can see on the top, I won't open with you. If we turn it back on and we go over back here and we run it, we hit E, the door opens fine. So that gives you the option to easily determine if a door should be interacted with or not. And you could even, of course, change this Boolean at runtime. And you could have a door that can and cannot be activated based on some settings in your player, maybe. Now our player, like I said, tells all of its interactable objects if it can be interacted with. This one's pretty simple. Basically, every time something comes in contact with our player, if it's an interactable object, we add it to an array. And when it leaves the player, when it's no longer in contact with the player, we remove it from that array. So this allows us to easily keep track of what is and is not near us that we are allowed to interact with. So that way, when we fire off the event, it tells everything that's near us it should be interacted with. Opening by trigger allows us to trigger our door being opened. So not requiring a player to be near it. Maybe we have a button you push somewhere. Maybe you trigger an event, activate an event, and we want our door to be opened via an event or a trigger call. This one's pretty easy to set up. It's actually going to be very similar to our interact with option. So if we turn on the activate by trigger, we're going to go ahead and keep all these other things the same. And then we have a trigger set up to interact with this door. If we go through our code, well, we find the exact same code. An event called trigger event is called. If we are allowed to do that, we go ahead and swap the state of the door. We animate it between open and closed. No difference here. What we need now is a trigger that actually triggers it. So in here, I have a generic trigger that we've created. There is a separate video on doing this, and I'll show you how it's set up. But basically, I want it to talk to my generic door, and I'm going to activate it by proximity. And only my third person can, character can do it. So if we run this and we walk over here, well, then our door should open and close. Just like if we were next to it, except it's being done by a trigger at this point in time. Now, it works the same way. Before, we had our character get everything that was near us. And then our character would interact with the things. Our trigger does basically the same thing, except it triggers things. So if we look at the code for our trigger event, if this gets triggered somehow, either an overlap or an interact with, it does the same thing. It makes sure it can fire. Then it grabs any actors we've set up that should trigger, and it simply calls the trigger event. That's it. It's really easy to set up. You could have your player do it, for example, inside of their blueprint. You're simply calling generic events. So for example, we could have the K key. So when I push the K key, I want to do something. In this case, we would need some door we could interact with. So I'm going to make this really simple on this one. I'm going to make a new variable called door to interact with. This will just be a generic actor. So we're going to go and make an actor reference, and we're going to make this public so we can edit it. We're going to grab that door, and we're going to tell it it's been triggered. So we're going to give it the trigger event. That's all we're going to do. Like I said, all we have to do is call the trigger event on our door, and it will do something. Let's grab our player, wherever we put him at, and he needs the door to interact with. We're going to have him interact with door one. We'll hit play. Now if I hit the K key, the door triggers. 
Doesn't matter what triggers the door, it's just a really simple interface where you simply tell the door it's been triggered. And then the door will handle it on its own, assuming you've told the door it's allowed to be triggered. Obviously, if it's not set up like that, it won't work. Now, the nice thing about setting these things up like this is they can work with each other. This door could be set up to be triggered, interacted with, and by proximity if we want it. So I could hit the K key and trigger the door. I could walk over my trigger, trigger the door. I can walk up to it, proximity the door. Or I can hit the E key and interact with the door. And all of them will work perfectly fine because they're all different checks and they're all allowed to fire off because they're all controlled by our settings here. Now the last option by default that's not set up with this is the door itself. The door itself is just a static mesh. There we go. I could set up anything I want in here. I'm simply using a door that comes included with the starter content, but this door itself is completely self-contained. If I want to, for example, set up another one from scratch, I could grab my generic door, drop it into the world like this, we are going to assign the door mesh to it. So we'll go ahead and put it down here like this. We're going to say only my player can interact with it. We're going to actually make it rotate on the X because why not? We'll go with 90 degrees. Again, these are all up to you on whatever you decide you want to do. Make sure, As long as your door is set up with a good pivot point, these should be an issue. We won't have a door closed. Um, We'll go ahead and activate by proximity. Let me grab my box here. I'll move my box to out here in front of it. And now whenever something touches this box, the door should trigger. We'll go ahead and hit play. We'll walk up to the box. And there you go. The door triggers 90 degrees. And if I allowed it to close, it would close as well. For improving the blueprint, for example, areas you can look at that you'd wish to improve is if we open up our generic door. Right now, it only rotates. The rotation code is pretty simple. In our animate door code, once it fires off, it simply animates the door using a timeline and goes from there. Now, this is a lerp from 0 to 1. So it's basically going to go from 0 to 1 over time. It's going to go from one location, one, one value to another. It would be pretty simple, for example, to add in a lerp for a vector. And you could have a vector in here. Or you could do something like lerp transform and lerp from one transform to the other. Now, if you if you decided to change it to a transform, this would give you the ability to set up a starting door rotation and the ending door rotation. You could turn these into transforms. And you could actually change the location, the rotation, and the scale all at once if that's what you chose to do. So if instead of you wanted a door that rotated, for example, on the Z axis, you could have a door that slid to the left or right simply by changing your lerping from a rotation to a transform, for example. And that transform, of course, allows you to then adjust the location in addition to the rotation or independent of the rotation or the scale or whatever you feel like. So that's a super simple thing you could do in order to improve the blueprint and give it more functionality. In addition to that, you could make it where the door sets itself up, maybe if there's no settings. Right now, I have a construction script for the door. This simply sets the static mesh of the door to whatever you tell it to. You can always check, for example, and see if this static mesh was not valid. So for example, in here, this is the door mesh that I want the player to use. We can always do a valid check on here and see if that door is valid. And if it's not, we could go ahead and supply a preset up door. So basically preset values. And then when this bit mesh becomes valid, the player has chosen a door to use. We now run the is valid node and we set it to whatever the player set. So that gives you a generic door you can drop in with some pre-done settings. And then every time the player adjusts it, not the player, the designer adjusts their door, it's going to overwrite your pre-made settings. And there we go. That is going to be our generic simple door. It's a nice reusable blueprint that we can just drop into our scene, adjust some settings, and make our doors work how we want them.